Okay. So now that we understand data binding concept, what we want to do is we need to understand styling concept in case of WBF. So um, for to understand the concept, let's take uh, one window. So I'm going to add one WPF window. Let's call it as window four. Then let's quickly add a couple of elements into it. So let's change grid to stack panel. And then let's add a couple of buttons into it. So I'll add a button. We'll have a name. Let's call it as BTN1. We can have height, we can have width and so on. And then I want to add a couple of more buttons into it. So we'll just change the names for each of the button. It's going to be button two, button three and button four. Okay. And then this particular uh, window four should be the startup. So I'm going to go to app.xaml and specify window four should be the startup file that we have. Let's try to run this and see what we get on the UI. So when we run, we'll see four buttons exist here. Okay. There's nothing on top of the button as such. So we can ignore that fact. So in case, uh, maybe we'll try to put content here. So let's say content equal to click me one. And then this is something which I'm going to copy and paste it multiple number of times with respect to each of the button. And I'll put here, click me two, click me three and click me four. One more time, we'll run this. So there will be different content on each of the button that we have. Okay, fair enough. Now what we need to do is we need to add some sort of appearance specific uh, property. So I need to change the appearance of the button. So I need to put some style to it. Obviously we have put up height and width, but barring that I need to put, let's say colors. So anything with respect to the appearance of a control, I put normally in web world, we call it as a style. So we have options available. One option is we can put up here something called as background color or background in general. Let's put the background color as in red. So what will happen if I put background for first button equal to red, the button turns into red color. Okay. Now let's say I'm looking for something similar for let's say each of the button. In this case, if at all, I am trying to copy paste the so-called background maybe for a theme purpose. Ultimately, I'm just trying to duplicate the things. And then whenever you do a copy paste, ultimately it, you're violating a principle called as do not repeat yourself, ultimately dry principle. So in that case, what is suggested behavior is instead of we like typically copying and pasting the content, what we can do is we can define a style here. Now let's try adding style to the button. Now, why do we define style? Because we see certain common things between multiple number of maybe controls or same control when repetitively used across the application. So what we can do is in order to define the style for the button, we can go for button has, let's say style. So I'll specify button has a style. And then we'll specify, I would like to have this style added. And then we'll specify the style should have should have a property set okay i should have specified here property name first of all whom i'm targeting to i'm targeting to a button and then i need some sort of setter which has got property which is called as background color and the value that i'm looking for over here is going to be red now, this seems difficult. Reason behind that, sometime back when we tried to set up a value called as red, it was simple background equal to red. But now when I try to set up this value, it is like too much of code that we have added. Now the thing is, why will I add button style like this? One can very well keep on adding values like this in multiples. For example, property called as font, I need to add here. And maybe the font size I need is let's say 20 in this case. So how will this button look like? This button will have some font change and this button will have so-called color that is red color. But what if I need to apply this to multiple number of buttons? In such cases, why did I put it in the like, why did I specify here target type equal to button? Because ultimately I was adding style for the current button itself. Remember, we talked about something like button can have other controls as well. 
What if button has got something called a stack panel and that stack panel has got multiple buttons into it? What if button is there and the button has got grid and the grid has got multiple controls including button itself? Okay, that's very kind of a exaggeration. That's kind of, we can say, maybe imaginary scenario. But believe me that in healthcare industry, you use something like button within a button kind of a concept a lot. When you really want a UI, which should look like it's coming out of the window, ultimately what you need to do is you have to have some sort of kind of look and feel like button, which means the form should look like fat. Okay. Now, this is not going to help me over here, but I really wanted every button to have a style like this. So instead of we putting this style in a button, what we can do is we can always and always remove this style from here. Let me remove this style from here. And here is what we are going to do. We are just going to add this at a stack panel level. So imagine a scene at a stack panel level. I'm going to specify I have some resources or common resources to be added. And the common resource is going to be a style which is for a target type called as button, which will have a background like this and which will have a font size like so and so. Now see to it what happens. I have specified no color to any of the button here, but rather I specified for every target type called as button, I need a style with the background red and font size 20. So here is what happens now. Let's run this and see what we get. Now you will notice each of the button here turns red. Reason behind that? None of the button knew what to do, but then since I specified this is common style for a target type equal to button, you'll find out each of the button here in this window 3 collects it. Will other windows will also get it? Obviously not. Reason behind that, these buttons are part of stack panel right now. Their parent is stack panel. So ultimately, when button gets initialized, what happens is button has a property initialized which is called as background. By default background is that uh, whatever uh, color, the khaki color that you see with respect to button. By default, font size also exists. But now the problem is the button has some sort of background, button has some default font size and then button will try to find out is there anything called a style defined for myself by the developer. No, it's not there. And ultimately what button will do now, button will try to find out that is with the parent that if there is any kind of a style defined for me. And then since button finds the style defined over here, which is having no name at all, it's common, just target type equal to button is mentioned, you will find out it just applies background red and font size 20. And this is applicable to each of the button over here. What if one of the button doesn't need it? What if only after specifying or specification by button, like I need this, this style, then only the style should be set. In that case, what you should do is you should always provide a key to your style. So I'm going to put a key to the style. Let's call it as a red style. Or let's call it as style one in this case. So here is what we will try to do now. If I run this, let's see what we get on the UI. As you can see, none of the button gets the style now. Again, reason, because now if any button needs to have this style, since target type is equal to button, ultimately that button will have to mention the key which is called a style one and how do we mention this we will mention here that is right now the button needs something which is called a style and just like we used a binding syntax i'll mention here that is i'm looking for something called a static resource by the key name called a style one now what exactly static resource is static resource means by default this particular style one should exist whenever visual tree gets created so ultimately if i run this let me run this and let me comment it later on. So if I run it, you will notice there is a style applied to the first button because I mentioned the name of it. Now what will happen if I just comment it? If I comment this code and if I run it, now since the button during the visual tree creation looks for a style one and if it can't find it, you will find out during initialization of component, you will find out you end up in error that is you can't find a resource called a style one in here. So here, the static resource which is mentioned, it must exist. Either it should exist with the button or it should exist with the stack panel or it should exist with the window or up in the hierarchy at max, it should exist with respect to something called as amp.xaml, which means there is always a hierarchy of lookup, which means if, suppose, if I try to copy paste this style one more time, 
So if I go to style and if I just try to specify here that the button has a style property, I'll mention button has a style here. And that style is simple copy paste like this. So if I mention button has a style, style has a target type like so and so. And then um, if I just mention here something like this, there's no key which is required right now. And then if I just mention here, suppose a color like yellow, what will happen is by default button, whenever it gets created, it will look for a style property value with itself first. If it finds it, there is no lookup. But if it can't find it over here, in that case, by default, it will look for a common style. And then if there is no common style exists, whatever is the default color and default font size, it will stick to. But then suppose if I mention here, that is I'm looking for a style, which is going to be a static resource, which means I'm sure it exists in the hierarchy. And then if I run it, it will by default pick up that red color style. Suppose if at all the same style is available at a window level as well. Imagine a scene, there is one more layer up, there is window resources that we have and under window resources, we add this kind of content. So I'll add same style one, but this time I will simply change the color. So I'll change the color to let's say green color. So at a nearest level button has red style, style one, and then a bit far level, one layer up, there is a style one with a green color. Let us see which one gets applied. So if button cannot find style one with itself, it will look into the parent that is so-called stack panel. It finds it, it applies it. There is no lookup after that. But if at all, it can't find that resource with stack panel, then it will definitely go and search in the up in the hierarchy, which is called as window resources. Now you shall notice it will apply so-called you can say green style in this case. What if I don't have this style even here? Because if I'm looking for common styles for all of the, what we call it as buttons, then suggestion is we can very well have this style added at app.xaml level, which means if multiple buttons across the XAML pages needs to share the style, you can very well have here application resource added like this. So right now button, uh, a target type, style is called a style one and then there is a so-called color mention. So button doesn't know like which particular or rather button doesn't have any style defined, but button is looking for a style called a style one. Button doesn't have it. Stack panel doesn't have it. Window doesn't have it. And app.xaml has it. So by default, the lookup will happen till the app.xaml level and by default, the red style will be applicable over here. What will happen if at all, since this app.xaml after compilation is going to be part of, let's say, so-called VAML itself. So ultimately, is there any way that externally we can change without worrying about changes while the application is running? Because this app.xaml will not be separately available. What if I really want this XAML to be separately available? It should not be part of the, uh, like, uh, you know, just like this is, there's a code behind to the app. So I really want that the XAML, which is just going to specify some resources, should not have the code behind. I really want the styles to be specified somewhere else. Just like in web applications, what we do is we define CSS files. Then there is a way out. What we can do is we can define something which is called as resource dictionaries here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add one resource dictionary, ultimately simple XAML files. And then I'll call this as, let's say styles one dot XAML. And then in this resource dictionary, which is ultimately going to be just a XAML, keep it in mind here, each of the files so far, including main window, window one, window two, window three, these files ultimately has got code behind style one dot XAML file doesn't have a code behind. So I'm just going to add a style here. That way you can keep on adding styles for multiple number of target types, and you can keep on specifying different, different keys the way you want it. Now, obviously style one and the entire application has got nothing to do with each other as of now, because nowhere I mention that my window four or any of the window is referring style one dot XAML. So how do I mention this? So what you do is you mention here resource dictionary and you specify source is going to be styles one dot XAML. So when we run this code, ultimately what you, what you will see is 
Now the red style gets applied over here. What will happen if I have got multiple number of styles to be uh, referred? So suppose if I just have style 1, if I have style 2 here, let me copy paste. So style 1, then there is style 2 that we have. Then there is style 3, let's say, that we have, for example. So what if I need something like multiple styles to be referred? Can I just put up maybe style 1, style 2 like this? Normally, there can be one resource dictionary at the app level. Okay. What if I really need to refer multiple number of resource dictionaries like this? Because one resource dictionary can be for button, other can be for text boxes, other can be for some third party controls. How do I mention all of it? Then we have another concept which is called as merge dictionary. So what we can do, we can mention here a resource dictionary. Though we can specify source here itself and we can specify a resource dictionary dot merged dictionaries. And then we can specify multiple number of resource dictionaries with the source over here which is going to be style1.xaml over here. Now first XAML, then the second XAML we'll try to put up here. Now you will notice we have got resource dictionaries added one after another in this case. So we have added multiple number of merge dictionaries. I believe we have not made a mistake here. Let's try to see if at all this is correct. Okay, of course it is correct. Take care. So now what we have is we have got style1.xaml and we have style2.xaml. Now these resource dictionaries are going to get refers, referred in an inverse order. So ultimately it's a collection which is merge dictionaries collection and whenever during the search your window 4 refers to button that if it has got a style called as style1 button finds nothing with itself, it finds nothing with stack panel. It finds nothing with window, it goes to app.xaml, nothing directly with respect to app.xaml, then it finds resource dictionary which has got no source specified and then there are resource dictionary like merge dictionaries over here which specifies that I have got multiple number of dictionaries acting as a source over here. And then if at all it has to go and look up into merge dictionaries, it will always go in an inverse order. So what is it that the style 2 has to specify here? Style 2 says that is Okay, it's a red color and style 1 says it's going to be a red again. Okay, so I should change the colors just to understand the uh, which one is get, getting applied. Let's specify style 2 says I need yellow and let's specify style 1 says I need a red. Now let's try to run this and see what we get on the UI. Now you will see, okay, cannot locate resource style 1. Maybe I made a mistake here by mentioning styles, it is styles 1 and styles 2. So I made a mistake while typing the name of the style. So it is styles1 and it is styles2 as a name. Now let's see which one gets applied. Style2 has got the yellow color that you will find out. So by default in an inverse order it actually refers the style2. If style2 doesn't have it then style1 it refers and then it would have applied so called red color after that. So keep it in mind you can always have these styles added externally like this. Can I actually refer style 1 sometimes and st sometimes style 2? Which means can I programmatically go and ensure that since x user has logged in, I need a style 1 and since y user has logged in, I need a style 2. Can we do something like this? We can do so but not with respect to static resource. If some style or some element is added as a st st static resource, ultimately that static resource is going to get added in a tree or in a visual tree whenever a visual tree gets created. But then in case you have a plan to make the change in the theme or a UI dynamically, then you have an option to use here something called as dynamic resources. More about dynamic resources in the next discussion.